I just experienced a wonderful about five days of amazing rest and relaxation and rejuvenation and refreshment, all of the R words. <laughs> and I wanted to teach you today, I wanted to talk to you today about rest and what God has spoken to me and taught me about rest, the true meaning of rest and how God wants you to enter into that rest in your life. So I've been going live with you for the past five months every single day. And so this was not only my first uh, about almost a week vacation break, but uh, it was my first even like one day in five months. And um, something so powerful about that right there is that if you were to tell me that, that you know, I would be ministering every single day for five months. If you were to tell, tell, tell me that even five months ago, like before God called me to do that, I would have wondered how. I would have, you know, been confused. Like, what? That's a lot. Like, not even a day. What? But uh, God's ways are different than ours. And so, so much of the time we can't understand why God wants us to do something or how it, will work, how it will work out or how we'll be able to do it. But we're just called to obey and trust. And so something God taught me powerfully in this season is that rest isn't exactly what many of us think it really is. Many of us think that rest is taking a break from work. And that's all that it means right there. It's taking a break, stopping work and just relaxing. And that's it, vacation or the weekend. And, um, you know, myself, I would look, I used to look forward to the weekends, high school and college. I remember I, I never really enjoyed what I was studying that much, both in high school and college. You know, my real big passions were singing and acting and God, and there weren't many classes of that sort in both high school and college. So most of the time I was like living for the weekends. I could not wait. I couldn't, I was living for vacations, Christmas time, summer, spring break. It was like, I was living for that, the rest what I thought was rest. Um, and, and even when God, after that, after that, once I was working and doing the uh, act, starving artist life, you know, um, serving, hostessing, um, I was living for vacation. I was living for breaks, for rest, because I wasn't enjoying the work. I wasn't enjoying the work and it felt difficult um, and it felt like um, not much was being accomplished, like not much fruit was being accomplished with the work I was doing. It was just, you know, frustrating and just not enjoying it. And so I was living for vacation, rest, you know. Um, even when God called me to ministry, even when he called me to ministry, that was a time I really did look forward to rest. I remember when Sundays would be over at first in the beginning, I was like, yes, oh, I'm so excited. I have a day to rest now, a day to relax that's done with because uh, m preaching and ministering was so unnatural for me. It was so, it felt like such my weakness. So you have all of these like the nerves and uncertainty and the what ifs and, and everything. So it felt like such an effort. Um, but you see, God took me through a journey from then till now, teaching me how to enter into his rest, his true, true rest, not society, what considers, not what society considers rest, but God's true rest. I'm very different now, completely different now than I was four years ago when God called me into to, to be a, an apostle. I'm very, very different. Um, he has taught me now how to enter into rest. God's true rest, he, entering into his true rest, this is, the, this is the meaning, this is the definition. It is 
resting in him in whatever you do. Resting. Knowing that he is with you. Knowing that it is his supernatural grace and favor that comes upon the work of your hands. He blesses the work of your hands. His partnership is with you through everything. His faithfulness is, is constant. He will give you whatever you need to, to do to accomplish whatever it is you need to do. So nothing is impossible. So before Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the grave, we were under the curse. There's a curse that was put upon Adam and Eve. And Adam's curse was uh, Exodus, sorry, Genesis 3.17. To Adam, God said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. So in the beginning of this curse, it says, through painful toil, you will eat fruit, food from the ground that you're working. Through painful toil. Through painful toil. Uh, on Instagram, on my Apostle Catherine Crick, it's kind of going in and out. So you can, it seems to be that the Fivefold Church one is, is doing good. So maybe if you want to join that, if you're on the Apostle Catherine one, it might be better. Um, or if you guys have Facebook too, we're on Facebook Live as well. But um, so curse is the ground. Through painful toil, the ground is cursed. So the ground that you're working is cursed. You will sweat in your brow. You will have painful toil. There's a curse upon our, our work. That's how it used to be before Jesus came and, and, and broke the curse. Um, it, it meant that God's favor wasn't with you when you worked. It meant that you had to work for everything and still that wasn't enough. Uh, that's why we see in the Bible all of these commandments and all these laws, they're working to achieve holiness. They're working to try to remove their sins. Or it's not removed, but being covered up. They're working to get their sins covered up. It's constant work, constant work. But there's never really fruit from it because it's never ending. There was never a person who was able to be perfect and uphold all of those, all of the all of the commandments there was nobody so when jesus came he destroyed that curse he broke that curse so that curse went away so now there's no more painful toil now there's no more sweat on your brow uh you will eat your food so so what this means is now god is with us empowering us with everything the bible says that he blesses the work of your hands so when we do work, when we do what God has called us to do, whatever it is, we are doing it with Jesus. We are doing it with him. And the work that we are doing, he is blessing. There's a supernatural grace and favor upon it. So when you're in the world, when you're not with Jesus, when you're in the world, doing it the world's way, your own way, you're working, you're working, you're working to achieve something, right? You're working and working and working. And many times it does appear that you're achieving things. Um, sowing and reaping is a principle in general that can work for even people in the world. But the difference is that the they're not doing it really with God. They are not, the, the God's favor is not upon their work. And so the enemy may be blessing it, which isn't a blessing, but it feels like it, it looks like it. Um, but there will never be this, this, there will never be the blessing without sorrow that way. So one may work and work and work and may achieve all sorts of things, but number one, they don't have salvation. Number two, they're not receiving uh, 
the all of the blessings that Jesus died on the cross for them peace and joy many people look like they have everything in the world they've worked so hard they've achieved the success fame whatever it is um, and they may put on a good show like they're on top of the world they're so blessed they're so happy but inside they don't have Jesus and when we don't have Jesus you don't have perfect peace you're not gonna have peace you're not gonna have joy you have demons you know they have things tormenting them the devil likes to hide that the devil likes to portray these uh, people that have success without God, the devil likes to portray that you don't need God. Look, they don't have God and they just worked really hard and this is what happened. But inside, you don't know the full story. Really, they're tormented inside in various ways. There's not a single person on this earth who without Jesus has true peace and joy because there's no peace, there's no joy outside of Jesus. There is none. So now Jesus came. When we receive him, we receive his perfect peace. We receive blessing upon the work of our hands. So it talks in the Bible about how God wants us to enter into his rest. Hebrews 4, 9. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. It goes on to say, So then, let us make every effort to enter into this rest. This is not... Now, the Old Covenant, it, it, it's talking about Sabbath, seventh day. You must rest from all of your activities. That's the, that's the only time you're resting. It's, it's this day of the week. That's what they did in the Old Covenant. And it was this law. But then Jesus comes with a different way, a new way. He breaks the rules. He comes and he starts doing work. He starts doing ministry. That's work. He's doing the work of God. He's doing ministry on the Sabbath. He's healing people on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees call him out. The Pharisees are like, the Bible, God says, no work on the seventh day. What are you doing? So here we see Jesus starting to rewrite what resting really means. So when it talks about entering into God's rest, it's talking about living every single moment, resting in Him, knowing He is with you, He is blessing the work of your hands. It's not your work that is achieving anything, but it's God's blessing upon your work. It's the combination, but there, it, it's not about your work your works and it's knowing that it's not about how things appear that that the fruit you might not see it physically but it's building up in the spiritual realm and one day you'll start to see that fruit in the physical realm god's blessing is upon it even when you don't see it in the physical realm you know you, you're not seeing the success visibly in the physical realm but god's blessing is upon every single thing you're doing so then you, you, because you're resting in this, you don't, you're not concerned when you don't see certain results. You don't compare yourself to other people. Other people have uh, certain success. They're going higher in a certain area. And you're working hard on something and you're not seeing that success. You're, you're comparing yourself. But when you enter into God's rest, you know God's ways are different than our ways. And God says that he's blessing the work of my hands. God's called me to do this. And so it's not about what I'm seeing in this moment, but it's about obeying God, knowing he's blessing my work. And there are things building up in the spiritual realm. We are moving forward. Progress is being made. Fruit is there in the spiritual realm. We're right on track. And so when you're in this awareness, you, you're just completely resting. You're, you're not worried. You're not worried about your performance. You're not second guessing yourself. Like, am I doing enough? Did I prepare enough? Um, you're not thinking about what if I mess up? What if I don't say the right words? Whatever it may be, you're resting knowing God is with me. He's called me to do this. He's blessing everything that I'm doing, all the work that I'm doing. And so the purpose will be fulfilled in its perfect time. 
the goal will be achieved in the perfect time. We're good. Like you're just resting knowing God is with me. He's blessing everything. I'm not looking at the physical realm. I'm not, I'm not comparing. I know, I know God's blessing the work of my hands, whether I see it or not. It's there. It's happening. You rest. And you know when God's called you to do something hard, something you can't do on your own ability, you're resting because you're knowing it's God giving you the ability. So you don't worry, will I be able to do it? No, you know, God called me to do this. God is the one who's giving me the words, who's giving me the ability. I can rest even though I don't know what it will look like. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what words will come out of my mouth, but I know God is with me. That's rest, that's rest. And when you rest like that, um, you have this consistent, perfect peace. You, 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 you don't feel tired because you're constantly resting. When you're, at a, when you're in a place of rest, you're not tired. You're, you're good. You can keep going. Myself, this is, this is what God, God, has been, God has taught me on this, this four-year journey of, of, of ministry for me, is that at first, he, he was teaching me. It was, it, was, it was difficult for me to enter into his rest. You know, I would be thinking, what will I say, you know? Will people be touched, you know? Will people come? How will this be? And, did I prepare enough? You know, I'm thinking these things and that's not completely entering into his rest. I was there a little bit. I knew he was with me, but I have these, you know, thinking about my own efforts, my own abilities going on. I'm thinking about that a lot. And so because I haven't entered into his rest completely, I'm feeling that physical need of, I need a break. I need rest. I need a vacation. I need a weekend, you know, I'm feeling that like I need. The reason being is because I'm not completely entering into his rest. But, you know, what's really cool is that, what's really amazing is that um, these past five months I've been here with you live every single day. And I, I felt the most rested of my whole life. It's because I, I, start, I started to learn how to really enter into God's rest. It's amazing. Like I going into this vacation, I didn't even feel like I like I needed it. And I thought that is interesting, you know? Like I've I've been working so much more than ever in my life, times a million, you know? Um and in the past, I felt like I really needed a break. I felt like I really needed a vacation or a weekend, whatever, a day off. I felt like tired, you know, whew. Um, but so this is, wow, here it is. I've been working harder than ever, more than ever, doing the work of God more than ever. And I don't feel like I even need a break, you know? And God spoke to me, you've, you're learning now. You've learned how to really enter into my rest. When you're in this constant state of rest with me, you don't need to feel like I need a break. God wants us to take vacations and weekends and days off, absolutely. But it's for a different reason. It's not like a, oh, you need a break or you're going to keel over. You know, it's not, it's not like that, oh, you've been working so hard. You're, you know, you just you need this. It's not that because you're constantly in his rest. So you're constantly moving in his power. Um, but it's, it's for a different, it's really for a different reason. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a part of your relationship with God. Having complete uh, relaxation, resting times, whether it's a vacation or a day off or such things, it's God wants to spend time with you in that specific way. Sometimes God wants to speak to you. He needs you to quiet your mind completely. Distance yourself from all the things you're doing, works, ministries, and everything, and completely quiet your mind so he can speak to you, speak new things to you. Um, sometimes he wants to speak to you in dreams. Sometimes there's you, when you're going about your life, there's not enough time to... 
uh, interpret and talk to God and hear from Him what He's trying to speak, whether dreams or just speaking to you in whatever way or through Scripture. Um, it's also about experiencing His love. Um, you know, something that's important to know is that your your relationship with God is, is constant. It's not to be just one day of the week on the Sabbath, on the Sunday. Your relationship with God is not just when you get off of your work, when you get done with work. Your relationship with God is not just the one hour a day you spend with Him, but your relationship with God should be every second of your life, every from from morning to night, all the time. God wants you to bring Him with you in every activity that you do at your workplace. How? Be intentional and bring awareness to the fact that He is with you. Be intentional. Open your ears to hear Him say, I love you. I'm proud of you. Directing you. Communicating to you. Much of the time that is simply reminding yourself of the Word of God. Bringing that to memory, many times that's actually the way that we're hearing God. But you need to be intentional to renew your mind with His Word. That's hearing Him. Is you going? That's op- That's the action of opening your ears. Is renewing your mind with His Word. Is remembering, bringing to remembrance, br- making yourself aware of His Word, what He has spoken in His Word, the Rama Word, the promises of God. Bring that to mind. That's many times how he's actually speaking. So you can be doing this anywhere, in the car, at your workplace. You can constantly be bringing awareness to the fact that he's with you. Once you do that, as you're opening your ears, now you're engaging with him all the time. Now you're listening to him all the time. Now you're speaking to him all the time. If you're not in a place where you can speak out loud, you can speak to him in your mind. If you're like at work or something, you can you can do that when you're going to the bathroom all the time. You should have this relationship with him all the time. Um, so, so, Something that's very important to know is that when you're working, when you're doing what He's called you to do, this is part of your relationship with God. Many people don't realize this, and this is the place, this is the secret place where I've grown so close to God, is is this awareness that He is with me as I'm doing what He's called me to do, the work. This awareness that He's proud of me, um, that we're doing something together, partners, Um, that people are being touched and we can like rejoice in that together God in me you know rejoicing Um, the kingdoms advancing I can rejoice with God in that you know I can see God being touched you know your your spouse or best friend you have you know if you can see them be touched in something see them how a wonder in their eyes looking at a beautiful sunset and you look at them and you see them like oh like that's intimacy that's relationship so that's how it is with God that's how it should be with God you know when you're doing what God's called you to do whatever he's calling you to do whatever mundane thing it is whatever God has called you to do it's for the kingdom if it's behind the scenes if it's technical work it's touching his kingdom so um doing these things and experiencing his power through you strengthening you wow god you're you're helping me do this you're with me like this is relationship with god i this is a place i've grown so close to god and gotten to know him so much is is actually doing work resting in him doing work with him i like to think of it as um when you get married um you know you have the honeymoon but then it's time to go back to the real world and you're doing work and then you have kids and you're taking care of the kids and there's so many tasks you have to do in the home, outside of the home, but you're doing it together. You're, you're, that's part of your relationship. Your relationship is not just on date night. Your relationship is doing all the work together. And you can grow so much when you can be aware to this fact, when you can connect with each other in, this rela- in, the, in the work in the tasks that you're doing, connecting, you know, seeing the partnership in it. So when you're working, 
God is with you. That's your relationship with God. It's very important you be aware to this because God wants to, God, God actually wants us to work hard. He wants us to work hard and a lot, but not in the way that many people think. Many people think, leave him at the door, work hard, and then pick up your Bible, do devotions at nighttime and pray or in the morning, and that's your relationship with God. No, no. God wants you to work hard for him, including him, being in relationship with him in the work. So that's your relationship with God. Part of your relationship with God is working, but then there's also a time of resting. That's part of your relationship with him too. Both. The, the, resting, the resting part, I mean, of the vacation or the day off or the, the complete, complete relaxation, resting away from work of all kind. That's a different kind of place where he wants uninterrupted time to really speak things to you. Um, be still and know that he is God. This is a time where God wants to pour out his love for you in certain ways. Like um, on this, this vacation that I just took, uh, the whole time I was looking at God's gorgeous creation the ocean and mountains and um, this wildlife he's created and uh, flowers and all of that. And, um, and it just blessed me so much. I mean, it was so beautiful. It brought me so much joy. And there are so many things that God has created and he did it for your enjoyment. He did it for your pleasure. He did it because he knew you would love it and it would bring you joy. He did it to bring heaven to you and for you to be blessed by it. It's an expression of his love. You know, a husband or boyfriend or whatever brings um, flowers to their lover, right? Bringing a gift of beauty to show their love. That's what God has done through his creation, through anything he's created. It can be people too, people he's put in your life. That's his creation. But he's put all these specific things around you in your life, his creation, as a love letter to you, as a gift to you, as an expression of his love to you, for you to just be like, oh, that blesses me. God loves me. And so God wants to give you gifts. He wants to bring you flowers. He wants to romance you. He wants to take you on dates. And his creation we need to look at his creation and take it in and receive his love i know there's many different parts of creation that just blesses you that you enjoy well god wants you to look at that and remember he made it for you i know that there's millions of people on this earth but really god there's certain things like i'm a big flower person i'm a big ocean person i'm a big like adventure person i love to like hike and kayak and do like crazy adventurous things like that um, to experience his nature, you know? Um, but not everyone is like me. Other people have different things that bring them joy in creation. Uh, so, you know, God made you specifically knowing, he's like, I'm gonna put this in, in you. That you're gonna love this kind of creation. It's gonna, you're just gonna love the ocean, let's say. You're just gonna love it and I'm going to I have these days planned where I'm going to bring you there and I'm going to romance you. I'm going to pour my love to you. That's, that's how God's made you. And so it's important we learn how to receive his love in all different ways. Sometimes we're missing out on his love because we're not being aware of, of how he's trying to bring us love. So when we take these breaks once in a while, instead of it being like, I need this break, Oh, it's more, it's a different kind of thing. It's a part of your relationship with God where God wants to pour love on you, speak to you in a way that can only be accomplished in this complete removal of your usual work. So something very different for me happened on this trip than this vacation than ever before. The other times in my life, I would like, look forward so much to vacations or breaks or a week or a day off and then because I felt like I needed it 
And when、um, it would end, I would be like, "Oh, I don't want this to end. Oh, I have to go back to work now." I know many of you have felt that way before, but this time it was so different. And this time, I didn't need the break. <laughs> and then I was like enjoying every moment. And then at the end of it, I was ex- I was so excited to be with you, and I was I'm so excited for tomorrow. I'm like, so excited to do work, and it's like this is powerful. This is how God wants. You to live. You, he wants you to live with joy, in rest, in every area. That you would never have to dread things. That you would never be at a lack of rest. Like that you would never have to like need. I need this day off、uh, because you're constantly resting in Him. And in His presence, aware of His presence, constantly in relationship with Him. The Bible says in Exodus thirty Exodus thirty three fourteen, the Lord replied, "My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest." So His presence is with you everywhere. So He will give you rest everywhere. So God wants you to know that this of what I'm speaking of. To be in this constant state of rest, this constant place of perfect peace, it is possible, and it's what He wants for you. It's His will for you, and it can take a time. It can take a process. For me, it took a while to learn how to really enter into His rest. But sometimes these these stretching moments, these moments where God calls you to. Do an extended amount of work. Sometimes he's he wants he's trying to teach you how to enter into rest. He's trying to teach you to fully rely and depend on him and get out of your own works, your own performance. He's stretching you. He's having you show up continually, showing up. See, I'm with you every time. See, there's no need to worry. See, I'm I'm putting favor upon your work. See, 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 until you get it. Until you get it, until you get it, that he is with you all the time, that he will come through every time. He will give you the ability every time. There will be fruit every single time. Now you're in a place of complete rest. Now you're in this place where you're ready to do anything because God is with you, empowering you. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, I'm excited for what God's going to do in your life from this word. I'm excited for what God is going to do with this new revelation that you have. Hallelujah. I know you're entering, entering a new chapter right now, where things that felt really hard, God has opened up your eyes. He has opened up your eyes today to enter into His rest in a new way. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I declare that eyes, every eyes opening, every eye watching right now would be open. Every spiritual eye would be open more and more, God, to the the revelation, the reality that you are with them. You are with them. You are giving them grace. May they find joy in the work that you called them to do. Oh, may they find joy. May they enter into relationship with you through the work, through every moment. May they enter into relationship with you in Jesus' name. I declare your spiritual senses to be sharpened right now, that you would remember. To remind yourself, to bring to awareness that God is with you, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many avakara. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! 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 Thank you, Jesus. May you receive power and strength to do whatever it is that God's called you to do. In Jesus' name, may you no longer work from your own strength, your own ability, or performance. May comparison end from today. In Jesus' name, may you enter into God's rest always. 
May you know his perfect peace always. Receive his peace and his joy right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah in Jesus' name.